Hey, it's ACAP. Today you're going to learn how to set up a large orchestral template in Logic Pro to use with VN Ensemble Pro. Even if you don't use VE Pro, you can still apply these organizational principles to your own template. In my last video, I talked through the basics of connecting Logic and VE Pro. If you haven't seen that one yet, watch it first to get you up to speed because I'm not gonna review that stuff in detail here. I've put a link to that in the description. I've grouped my instrument families with folder stacks. My shortcut for this is Command-Shift-F. Because you can't create tiered folders in Logic, I've denoted instrument families differently than individual libraries. You'll also notice that I have track automation track stacks for each instrument family. I'll get into this later. I've color-coded all the libraries and instruments within each instrument family the same way I've colored all my VE Pro instances. All my instrument family dividers are the same color, but it's up to you if you'd rather keep those the same color as your instance too. I've ordered my instrument families sort of how the orchestra would sit on stage, with the strings up front and the percussion and choir in the back, but if it makes more sense to you to put everything in score order, then do that. Just make sure that whatever order you pick, stick to it so that you can quickly scroll to the instrument you want even if you have hundreds of tracks. In between each divider or library, I've also added an external MIDI track set to no output set to the default color. If you name it with a space, these tracks will appear blank. The fun part is that since they're all set to the same output, if you change the color of one of them, they all change. What's the point of these tracks? You'll see why once I expand all the folders with alt click. They serve as a visual divider between the colors of each instrument family and each of its folders. Note that when you close a folder, the color as well as the name of the folder disappear. The way I made these dividers was by creating three folders, each with one external MIDI track set to no output, and by hiding the external MIDI tracks while the folders were still open. You'll remember from my last video that if you used VSL's pre-made template, it groups MIDI tracks by port. While that may be helpful for setup and troubleshooting, it's not very musical. So once your instruments are working properly, don't be afraid to move those tracks into different folders based on your organizational preferences. I recommend that your VE Pro server project template contains instruments that will most likely be used across all of your projects. Then in your logic template, aside from your VE Pro instrument tracks, you can include additional set it and forget it tracks, such as any logic instruments that you tend to use often. Then add instrument tracks that may change from project to project. For example, in my case, I load some rise and hit instruments into a contact plugin using a multi timbral software instrument track. Above these, you can see some EXS24 Logic percussion tracks. It's also a great idea to add any synths that you'll want to readily manipulate to your Logic template this way. Doing this ensures that everything is accessible within Logic and minimizes trips you need to make to the VE Pro window. Before I move on to my automation tracks, I have a trick that enables you to apply a default quantization strength value to any new MIDI regions you record and quantize. First, make sure it says MIDI through next to region in the inspector by deselecting all MIDI regions if you happen to have any in your project. Then pick a quantize value. If you stopped here, it would automatically quantize any newly played in MIDI regions to this value. Next, choose your desired Q strength value. Finally, turn off quantize. Your previously set Q strength value will be grayed out. Now, when you record MIDI into your project, your performance won't be quantized initially, but when you do quantize it, your default Q strength value will take effect immediately. This can be useful when quantizing orchestral music or any music that should not normally be hard quantized as it saves you the time of having to set a Q strength value every time you quantize a new region. In the last video, I also showed how you can add different effects to your VE Pro instruments by using extra aux tracks. I like being able to see these tracks in the arrange window so that I don't have to search for them in the mixer every time I want to use them. This also makes it much easier to fine tune any automation you've written to the tracks. To do this, find your VE Pro plugin tracks and auxes in the mixer. Choose the tracks you want to add and press Ctrl T or right click and select create track. In my next video, I'll explain the reason why I routed my VE Pro auxes the way that you see them here. I put these tracks just below my instrument family folders for easy access. 
The final touch is routing everything. I send each VE Pro aux Logic Software Instrument Track and Multitambral Software Instrument Track aux to one of 18 reverb buses. They each output to one of 18 monitor buses. This allows fine grain control over the wet and dry signal of each group of instruments. You can set custom names for your bus ins and outs at I.O. labels under the mix menu. I send all the reverb and monitor auxes to a master mix bus at Unity Gain and output each reverb and monitor aux to a matching stem printing track, but don't change the outputs to print stem buses just yet. You'll see why in a bit. My master mix bus's output is set to stereo out when I want to hear everything, but I can point it to my master mix print track, which is an audio track, when I am ready to print my mix. Another way of handling this is by sending the mix bus to the mix print bus and turning it off when not in use. The trouble with that is that when you go to print your mix, it'll be twice as loud because you're hearing it both from the mix bus and the mix print bus. The solution is to change the mix print to send pre-fader. This way, you can just drop the mix bus fader when you're ready to record your mix. Finally, I have 18 print stem tracks, which are audio tracks as well, to match the reverbs and monitors. I recommend creating these audio tracks and adjusting their inputs to whatever buses you want to use for printing stems before you set the outputs of the reverb and monitor buses. This is because if you set the outputs before tracks with those inputs exist, Logic will automatically create new aux tracks for each output you set the bus to. So rather than unnecessarily add aux tracks to your project, you can output directly to the print stems if the audio tracks with respective inputs are in place first. I use this same trick when creating the master mix print track. If you want, you can color the environment objects you created in the last video for better organization. Open up the environment, and under View, check Colored Cables. Then bring up the color palette, select the group of multi-instruments you want to color, and pick a color. I've started offering accompanying PDFs of these video tutorials if you need a quick offline reference without needing to bring up the video again. At the time of this video's publishing, they are available for four of my older tutorials. Check the video's description to see if it's there. From now on, I will try to always include a PDF along with a tutorial. When the video is first published, I will also include a discount code that allows you to get it for free. Task Attack, a mobile game I just scored, has just been released on the Apple App Store and Google Play from Hot Avocado games. There are links to the app and the soundtrack in the description. The score is in the style of classic chiptune soundtracks from the 80s. I wrote all the music for that game in Logic, and I wrote the orchestral version of the medley using VE Pro with Logic. So if you get a chance to check it out and have any questions about how I did something with the music, just ask in the comments below. I've seen a lot of new people subscribe since my last video, and I just want to say thank you for subscribing and welcome to the channel. These videos are for you. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tutorials, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Check the description for more info, leave a comment if you need clarification, and please share if you think this can be helpful to someone else. Until next time, stay tuned.